So this episode that you're about to hear is uh, going to be chock full of definitely surprises, possibly synchronicities, maybe riffs, maybe an Uber interview, perhaps cats eating. There's no telling what may happen. Having said that, the hotline, the Inspirato Projecto Participado, or if you prefer the Inspirato Communicado hotline, will be featured in here. The phone calls that we have received on the Inspirato Projecto hotline those those calls will be featured in this episode. So this is an invitation to you, dear listener, dear at-home viewer. Are you driving your car right now? Are you getting a suntan? Are you meditating above a mountain? And you're wondering what, what is going on? Are you laying in a hammock? A tropical island? Are you sitting on your tractor? What are you doing? What are you doing right now? You can participate. 561-203-9179-er. You too can participate. You call up the hotline. Leave your message, and we will feature it on this podcast, which you will actually hear coming up on this podcast episode, a series of surprises, unforgettable circumstances conveyed within the information found in these messages. So that will be in this episode, and I want to encourage you, call us up. Be a part of it. Be a part of it. It's always fun to play volleyball with someone else. And so join the game. Join the game. All right. We will... We'll see what happens next. Hello. I was uh, just thinking about your painting while I was drinking this jug of Burgundy. Uh, it's uh, from 1978. It's uh, very well uh, preserved and um, it's dark, kind of like the color of the painting that you did. Uh, so I was just uh, re- remembering the painting and, and thinking that I enjoyed it. And uh, I'm imagining it in the bottom of my glass right now. Um, I hope you enjoy your day, and I know I'll also have I was just reading how uh, there are these machines that are being invented now that can detect your intention of how you want to talk a certain way and it's being able to figure out how to translate that language so if you're paralyzed or something or you're like let's say Stephen Hawking uh, you just got your mind on this thing and it's speaking for you so I had this idea about a person who comes out of a coma and they wake up Eventually they come out and they wake up to the sound of their own voice speaking to them. And they realize that at some point during the, during their in coma, at some point hooked up to them, that someone hooked up one of these things to them. So basically while they were in a coma, they were still talking. And so someone, someone, you know, they're kind of dreaming or whatnot. And 
you know, because usually when people are in coma, you're talking to them. You don't, they don't, you don't know if they're hearing you, but you end up hearing later on. And when they come out of coma, they say, oh yeah, I heard every word you were saying. I know what you were saying and I know what was going on. So maybe while they're in their coma, they're dreaming of these things and they start talking. You start hearing their, their words coming through the speaker. Some people are like, you know, Johnny, uh, what are you feeling right now? Oh, I'm flying around. You know, and then so that maybe they sort of talk him out of that coma. They lead him towards getting out of the body. So that would be quite an interesting thing now, wouldn't it? Because if that's the case, could you imagine you attach that to people who are accusing people of murdering or, or doing terrible things, but then you also have it hooked up to the mind of the person who was accused of doing it? You could get a, solve a lot of issues quickly that way. That's for sure. Because your brain is, brain is talking and it's coming out there. Broadcasting. Mind Reader 2.0. So I'm taking Jenny's car up to Guitar Center. It's a rarity for me to be driving a car. She left her car here. She went into town. I think I was telling you guys in the past uh, couple episodes ago that she went out to uh, Chicago to help out my mom who had a stroke in her eye of all places and they did some laser stuff and um, so my sister Jenny went out there to help help out my mom for that first week and uh, take her home and all that stuff so Jenny's getting back into town tonight I'll be picking her up from LAX and uh, actually directly from here from from Guitar Center once I go to check out I need my favorite strings of all time Martin Martin Folk Acoustic I think I'm going to start begin enunciating a lot more hit my T's really get those T's all of all of those distinctive bits that we like to hear when someone is speaking to us on a podcast. None of that mumble jumble, mumbo jumbo, mumble jumble. Just pure enunciation. Martin Folk Acoustic. They are wound with silk. And I am also picking up some end pins for the bridge, for the guitar. I have to learn the song Sister Golden Hair for Yachtly Crew. And my, my string, string broke. So, that's just a secret between us. Okay, don't go spreading that around. That's, uh... That's in the works. What's in the works? Nothing. Nothing's in the works. <laughs> Nothing's in the works. Nothing to see here. How's the new Twilight Zone? Have you guys been watching it? I see the big old billboard here for the Twilight Zone. I'm so happy it's getting back out there into the public consciousness. And ideally, this will lead folks back to the Rod Serling fan faves. That includes me being a fan fave. I love ye old ye old uh, Twilight Zones. I went on a marathon. That was great. I think I got. I think I got through all of them. I think I did. They're missing one season, and the one season they're missing is that when uh, tw when uh, Twilight Zone went to. I think it was an hour format. It went from a half an hour to an hour. And uh, Dave Uchansky, my buddy Yushanovich, he, he's expressed many times his distaste for that season because 
He said it was perfect. He had a half an hour long. When I was reading it, when I was watching that marathon, it sent me down a Rod Serling rabbit hole, and I saw some wonderful stuff. Like on YouTube, there was this audio of a lecture. I think it was at USC. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, God, what school was that? This particular school, I actually did research in a wanting to collaborate with those guys. Um, but it's neat when you read some of these transcripts and you hear some, some of those interviews with him and I see some interesting parallels with this, I guess with any any art artist, but uh, with uh, the David Lynch book, Dare to Dream, or Room to Dream, Room to Dream. And you see, you see these struggles or these adversities or these challenges they overcome all these interesting walls that were in front of them whether it was uh, themselves or or some outside entity was it man versus man or was it man versus nature man versus himself So, when you when you hear in these lectures the stuff that he went through, his background, how he grew up, all this stuff, you then can look through those Twilight Zone episodes and go, holy moly, aha! I see the lineage. You trace the lineage. I can imagine when you get to that point, because there's a point where he was doing so much. Rod Serling was doing so much for Twilight Zone. Writing it, you know, just, I think he was directing it. He, there's a whole bunch of things that he was, he was involved with, and so it just kind of, you know, consumed him. That's all he knew. And I can imagine that could happen a lot of times when they go, okay, we want this series, now go ahead and hurry up and make it. And you're like, whoa. And then, you, and then you're, you're putting all these things out there. And I don't think you... You know, you don't have the luxury, I don't think, of overthinking it, of overanalyzing what you're creating. Because there's they're demanding this, there's a deadline, they're saying, okay, you gotta get this done, and you gotta just frickin' cook it. You gotta You just gotta go. You gotta feel the you gotta listen to the muse. And if everyone's listening to the muse, which is the story, which is the, the you know, the creations that are being created if everyone's listening to the muse, I do believe all of those muses can work out together concurrently. Those muses, if they're doing their job, if it's not that muses doing their job correctly, it's the people who are, you know, let me rephrase that. If the people are doing their job correctly and letting the muses work through them in the way that the muses want to work through them, then the, all this harmony will come together. The harmony will come together. Because the greater the greater thing is the story, so the story will dictate what it wants to be. It does not become a, a clash of egos. We talk about this all the time. When it becomes a clash of egos then you know that they're not really serving what the story wants to be. It does not hurt to just say yes to someone's ideas, particularly when they're very excited about it. They're very happy about their idea. They want to get it out there into the world. What it needs is steam. What it needs is fuel. What it needs is the co-signing, knowing that someone is co-signing on that idea. Putting their stamp for approval and going, yeah, I will contribute to that idea.
So, today normally we would be at Disney. Today and tomorrow. Not tomorrow, but the next Monday, Monday the 6th, there'll be another Inspirato Projecto K Chung radio show, 1630 AM. Some birds almost just hit me. Now, the past three or four episodes, I think we had of Inspirato Projecto, four episodes, was uh, Captain Nicholas at the helm. He was doing some sound experiments. And so he was able to sub for me on those days that I was at Disney for Yachtly Crew. So, if you heard that, thank you for tuning in. He's a brilliant mastermind, and he... he uh, he has a lot to share. But like most folks, they he a lot of times we think that what we think is value valuable is only valuable to us and and that's fine. And that, that ought to be just enough to just write off of. Now, the extra fun thing is being able to share the excitement with someone, that collaborative. That, that collective, like, all right, you know, you're all, you're rooting for it. It's like these people, the folks going to, uh, going to sport, sports fans. There's that camaraderie that comes along with that. They're all in it together for this thing. We shall triumph. So... Not that, that that doesn't even have to be a motivation. The motivation of just, you know, we shall triumph with the motivation of just collaborating with us, connecting with others, working together to make this thing. Did I pass up guitar sound? No. Did I? How did I get this far out here? Oh, here it is. Here we go. So, you know, when you're, you're, you are you have this value in your brain, there are others out there who share those commonalities. Take a look at any rock group or any movie that you just absolutely despise. And guess what? And realize that there are millions who feel completely the opposite way than you do. And... They got fan clubs, they got forums, they got blogs dedicated to it. People who just go crazy and know know how to quote all of it. They know it all. So that's the same thing with your ideas. That's the same thing with our ideas. There are others out there who are willing to share their ideas that are similar to your ideas. And to geek out with you on these particular aspects. Now, the question is, are we going to be the bellwether for those, those other, for those others? Are we going to be, are we going, are we going to be willing to be the beacon? Are we going to be willing to raise the freak flag and fly it? Are we going to be willing to be the first domino that, that, that falls, so to speak? The first domino that moves the momentum along. Are we going to? Are we going to do that? And, uh... uh you know, when, when we do that, it's fun because the other people just come out of the woodwork. They emerge from the woodwork. They see it and they go, Oh, I know what that is. Like, uh, for instance, I'm a big Army of Darkness fan. If I see someone out there with uh, a t-shirt and it goes three books no one told me anything about three books if they have that quote on their chest I'm going to know that they are a huge Army of Darkness fan they're willing to hear tons of people go what? Uh, okay you know and, and look at them sideways and go what the heck is that shirt supposed to mean they're, wi- they're willing to do that For the, you know, I'd like to think for that, what I'm imagining is, um, 
they go through that for that rare opportunity, that rare chance that someone is going to, um, you know, someone who associates with that is going to see that. Hello. All right, we are here at Guitar Center. We're going to look for some pedals now. Wow, it's been a while since I've been here. Not pedals, strings, strings. Look at for. Just gotta find myself. Gotta find my way to the right counter. There's a lot going on in here. Oh, yeah, here we are. Here we go. Here we go. There's a wall here of strings. for those Martin Folk Acoustic. Martin Folk Acoustic. Oh, there's all the Martins. We will be, uh, we'll be back with more of this be back with more of this later. Here we go. For the first time with the uh, the official Yachtly crew pick. Here we go. Care. Well, I 
tried to fake it, I don't mind saying I just can't make it. something of my own, but at the same time I'd, I'd like to do um, justice to um, fandom. <laughs> what particular so, things do, do, would you like to see happen in a new Star Wars film? film uh, or even a video game for that matter? I guess... For instance, what um, you seem to have a fire for that idea of wanting to, you know, um, create a video game that would that would really do it justice and to Star Wars. What do you think are some of those elements that you would add and or that you have not seen them, you know, put into a video game yet? What would be some of those you think? I guess hmm. I don't know, really. Um... Like, do you mean more story-wise, or exactly. do you mean more? Um... Oh, and, gotcha. And in the, um, oh, how, do I, how do I explain that? Not necessarily exactly everything that's happened throughout the movies, because I mean that's that's right. that's easy to. But um, something along the lines, I don't know. Uh, it just feels like they haven't really um, explored the the concept of bringing a virtual, basically, yeah. It is built virtual. Uh, uh, just expand on everything that's uh, that's known about the Star Wars um, franchise. Basically, uh, it's, there's just so many, so much to cover too. Uh, so maybe going deeper into into information that's you know already revealed, perhaps, rather than coming up with new new stuff do you that's, mean that's the thing that it's easier to make things that have already that you're that you already know about right that, right that have already happened in the movie. It's, it's, it's that's the i guess i guess i would like to add on to that like still keep the core um the core information that we know the core yeah. um, knowledge but at the same time expand on it because it's right exactly it's um it's There's so many unanswered things. questions, right? Exactly. So many things that uh, just like you're, um, just like you were saying about your friend that he got involved with the show and really got inspired to yeah. expand upon it. Yeah, yeah. that's what's so exciting seeing in these movies when I see them make a little nod to something that you've known about a yeah. long time ago. You know, like uh, for instance, I recently saw Solo, and he gets those those little gold dice. And you see where he gets that, because, you yeah, know... They, they tie up. Yeah, it shows, it shows where he gets those that are hanging in the Millennium Falcon, and you're going, ah! Yeah. And then you go, oh, there's there's how he got it, how the Millennium Falcon from Lando, and, you know, all these little, oh, there's how he met Chewbacca, exactly. you know, it's like... That, that's kind of, that, that's, a, that's exactly what I'm, what I'm uh, talking about. It's fun because you get to see a little bit more of the painting kind of chiseled away exactly. that is still tied to something that Definitely. really excites you and is personal to you. Definitely. And it's a whole new concept and all, all in its own too. So right. That's, that's, that's the hardest part. <laughs> like, I think, man, they could do a whole bunch. I was so excited with, I was very surprised, very pleasantly surprised to see Solo. And I thought, man, I could totally imagine a whole series of these films of him going doing these crazy I mean man it was oh, action packed yeah. it was it, it, like the the way that he interacted with Lando and the way that he interacted with his ex-girlfriend who might or might not have turned evil um, you know all, all these little tiny little things it's like man you could there's so many stories like okay how did he come across Jabba the Hutt for instance you know exactly. how did he what, did he ever uh, come across Boba Fett in the past before exactly. did he ever you know there are all these little things that you could totally explore and even stuff too that could have a loose thread to even 
uh, uh, Star Wars, like for instance, exactly. I thought it was interesting that they showed uh, Darth Maul in there. That Darth was Maul, yeah. that was really <laughs> interesting that they did that little sh that little tie in there, and then a couple of the creatures too. I, I remember from seeing back in like let's say Return of the Jedi or even in the Cantina the original, original Cantina, film. where you see some oh the re uh, the uh, the eyes. He goes, keep your eyes to yourself, keep them all to yourself. Oh, yeah. You know, like don't look at my cards. Um, like it was just so cool. These little tiny little little things and. Uh, uh, Man, I, yeah, I, I love seeing those little pinballs, those little things that, that remind you of the other things. Exactly. I, I think that's pretty cool, though. All these, um, from there you can branch out to different other um, franchises that have the same type of following and, like, just keep expanding on them. It's, it's pretty cool. It's, uh, Do you write at all? Uh, no, I don't, but I always wanted to. <laughs> I, I do have time, but I don't. <laughs> do you have ideas? Do you ever come like, up with ideas, like when you're driving around and stuff? Yeah, from time to time, it just pop, pops in, thinking all the time. <laughs> have you thought about uh, maybe making a podcast? Oh yeah, definitely. I just yeah. Well, um, everybody, <laughs> anybody that can, that would want to make a podcast nowadays could make a post. Podcast. Oh, absolutely. I just, don't, I just want to know the first step to it, but that's everywhere. It's cool. Well, you know, it's so interesting. I recently I came across an app called Anchor, anchor.fm, and it's, it's a free app, and you download it, and it's a podcasting app. And basically, wherever you go out there in the world, you can just record a podcast. You can oh, just nice. record it just with your phone. And... Uh, I got a little extender microphone that I put into the into the into the phone. Here, let's see. Okay, so look. Uh I this idea. This idea this doctor who uh, it's kind of a dreary day today it's interesting it's really cool to be sitting out here in nature smelling this beauty look at these looking at these uh, birds I think that might be a pigeon up there I've been talking a lot more about carrier pigeons lately so I had this idea for this uh, psychiatrist uh, who also owns his own medicine company FDA approved, you know, medicine. And he calls it Xanadu. <laughs> he calls it Xanadu. And it's like a, just this, like, what it does is, uh, it reminds me a lot now, once I started saying it out loud to Jenny, uh, reminded me of kind of like that movie Brain Candy by the, uh, Kids, Kids in the Hall. So, so we'll continue here. Is that the idea is Xanadu? Okay, so well, first of all, let's go into the into the office. So let's say he, he has some patient who's in there. Patient's like, yeah, so so uh, doctor. Maybe oh maybe his name is Dr. Xanadu. And he just names it right after his last name, Xanadu. Dr. Xanadu. Dr. Xanadu. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I imagine maybe he had a relative like Dr. Livingstone who was just an explorer and he found this special, this special fruit, this special herb, whatever, and you grind it in this powder and you can make it into a pill and bam, and it does this particular thing where basically when you take it, it reminds you of all those victorious moments that you've had in your life. All of those victorious moments. All those times where you've, 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 you've like, you, let's say you won a trophy. How crazy is that? We hear the sirens right now, right at this moment. Of course, synchronicity. The universe is, oh my God, amazing. So it's reminding you, reminding you of all of those victorious moments that have happened in your life. Where you've won the spelling bee. Where you uh, got an award for an art show, you sang a song in front of a crowd for the first time, all of these things all throughout your life. You're just flooded with these victorious, exciting memories. The first time you roller skated backwards and you pulled it off, and you're just like, whoa, and you felt so good. That time you played kickball and you, blam, and that ball went so far, and you ran your home run, and it was so victorious. It went, bam, bam, 
bouncing, bouncing. It was this crazy moment in time. Time and T-ball where you really smacked it, got a home run, wham, ran the bases. Wow. Wow. All that stuff comes flooding back to you. Now, I was thinking, so I was thinking, what happens is, Maybe there's, so every every medication has sort of a side effect. And I was thinking maybe the side effect is that it's kind of like the Dorian Gray kind of thing um, in the opposite direction where it makes you younger, the Benjamin Button aspect where it makes you younger. So each time, who knows the time span? So that enjoyment, that enjoyment of the victory you know, as they say, when you spend a lot of time in your imagination, a lot of a lot of reasons why a lot of old people who look very young have very few wrinkles and they look very young. Well, you realize they're young at heart. Young at heart. Maybe Xanadu's catchphrase is, "Feel young at heart again." Uh, Xanadu, where you always feel young at heart. Young at heart. Maybe that that's it, the catchphrase. Young at heart. Yeah! Y-A-H. Young at heart. Yeah! Xanadu. Yeah! Becomes catchphrase. Xanadu. So I imagine here you are in this office and this... Uh... Oh, so that's the other thing is... What are your thoughts? Do you think like... So as you get young at heart... Are you getting younger mentally, too? Or are you just appearing younger? Because you're feeling lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and closer to that source, that victory. Now, this is the thing. A lot of that, what that is, is it's dealing with the past. So it's dealing with the past. So maybe that's why it's making you younger, because it's going... It's turning you in that direction. Now, this is the thing. What if you get balanced out? The way you get balanced out is you 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 start recognizing your own victories right now. So let's say you can you can you can work the balances in this. So okay, this is the crazy thing. So you get you <laughs> you the way to appear younger is to reminisce back about the past, the victorious times, by taking Xanadu. So, maybe what happens is, I don't know if it's a, it's a machine with frequencies or, or, you know, to help offset this or, or in addition to this or who knows what. So let's say, okay, so you reminisce about your victorious times when you're taking Xanadu. That's the side effect. Bam. Now you reminisce about the, the, the younger... Those times, you start looking younger. Your mentality from those times, does, do you start losing the wisdom you have right now? You start losing your wisdom you have right now. So to offset that, what happens is maybe someone figures out a way because even though that's a side effect... I'd love to believe there's a way to overcome that side effect, either by frequencies, and you hear that, and it pulls you out of it, you hear a song, pulls you out of it, or you can just do it mentally. Now, so let's say, let's say a way of being able to get younger, feel that greatness, look younger, is you start, you start living in the now, you know, living more in the now, being victorious in the now, in the now, in the now. So what would pull you in that direction? And if you're feeling more secured in the now, would it would it just by nature just be weaning you off of off of the pill, so to speak, off of that herb? Because you're you're celebrating what's going on now. Helicopter. Heli heli. Heli is eight, right? Helix? Helix. Imagine an X like it, like an infinity sign. It just keeps going, 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 and then zip, zip, it connects over there as a wind, loops around, helix, bam. Helix is infinity. H is eight. H, H, H is eight. 
H eight H maybe H is eight maybe that's why that loops that is that way what's so interesting is eight 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 H maybe someone who had a, a speech impediment H they the the way that they said T was H H H how many have you got H oh you got H you got H oh, okay H H and then maybe that H started just becoming an, a letter H. The letter H just sort of becoming an H. People just started doing wordplay. I mean, if I'm doing wordplay right now, certainly they did wordplay back then. This is the this is the image. These are the images I'm getting right now. H eight. So, with this, so okay, so I'm imagining in this office. So this guy. Uh, so this guy's like, yeah, so doctor, I'm having these dreams of these ghosts. I mean, they're dancing around. It's like it's like Danny Elfman dreams, uh, oingo boingo, uh, uh, the clinkety clonk of the percussion sounding like human bones, a spine clonk, clink, clonk, clink, clonk, clink. And it's and I see just these interesting, crazy, ghostly figures. What what what's you know, what can I do? Doctor Xanadu says Easy diagnosis, easy prognosis. You're crazy. Take Xanadu. Really, Doc? I'm I'm crazy. You're crazy. You hide me. You hide me. <laughs> he could either say you hide me, or he could say you hide me. You hide. You hide. You hide me. You hide me. You're crazy. Take Xanadu. That'll solve it. And it does solve everything because it takes people into that mindset of that. Now, I think, you know, there could be – maybe what happens is when you take it, you're encouraged to write down in a journal all the great stuff so it's there. It's recorded. You're also encouraged to record it, the audio of those great experiences. So you could play those back and hear those so you don't need the pill anymore. Maybe the wondrous thing about Dr. Zanandu is to try to get people – he does whatever he can to get you off the pill, off of – um, 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 being dependent upon the pill to bring you into a point of nowness, of loving what you're doing right now, feeling the victory of following your passions and your dreams. He's trying to teach you, you know, look at the seeds of what you did and what it became and, um, maybe the way he weans them off is frequencies, which then, Uh, oh, maybe what it does is it amplifies their epiphanies. It encourages their epiphanies. They feel a sense of encouragement as the epiphany happens. They're encouraged to write down those epiphanies. They're encouraged to act upon them. Interesting. Interesting. So, this pill, what happens is they start looking younger and younger. And so, maybe, maybe intelligence, maybe, maybe the frequency helps them get more into their nowness. And let's see, well, let's, let's imagine what those, what are the elements, what are the actual elements of what, of those victorious moments in life? Yes, we attribute it to the being youthful during that time, feeling vibrant, feeling vim, feeling vigor, feeling the zip, zap, zap, that... <laughs> being zipped, zapped, up, zapped into, the, into the now, into that, that, that lightning stream of excitement. And what it was was us feeling greatest in our greatest moments, feeling feeling so excited about being tapped into that. And so when we watch people in the Olympics, when we watch people really shred on guitar on stage, when we watch some beautiful dancer do some crazy, you know, Cirque du Soleil zip, you know, uh, 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 cartwheels and kinds of crazy flips. And those dudes, they flip the little ladies and those little ladies go... <laughs> They do all those flips and they land. They do these crazy balancing things. It's like, the reason why we love that is because there's a commitment to a perspective that is being 
embodiment of that thing. And sure, we can look at, let's say, for instance, uh, some rappers. Let's say we look at a lot of imagery of that. There's a lot of egotism. There's a lot of, you know, I'm the best, a lot of this me, 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 bitches, money. You know, there's there's a lot of, you know, that kind of imagery in, in there. And people go, oh, that is badass. And what I'm, what it is, it's just another camouflage. It's someone who's so fully embodying this particular perspective It doesn't matter what that perspective is. Maybe it's someone who absolutely loves ice. Just ice. And that's it. Ice. They're so infatuated with it. That in itself. All their songs are about ice. Driving the ice truck. Ice skating. All that stuff. Ice. Having ice ball fights. You know, just I mean, just whatever. Ice ice, ice kingdoms. Ice, ice, ice mansion. Ice igloo. Igloo mansion. Ice related things. Uh, their favorite superhero is Iceman from Marvel. You know, they dress up for as Iceman for Halloween and, you know, all this stuff. <laughs> you know, whatever. Maybe they have a, 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 a snow-making machine that they got in a backpack on their back or something. <laughs> you know, they really go, go through it. They fully embody it. It doesn't matter what it is. So I think what it is is seeing someone so fully embody that thing, whatever that is. And then especially, you know, what adds to that is when you see a crowd celebrating that. There's that, that, that desire of everyone celebrating this victorious thing where they're watching basketball. All these people are watching basketball. And there's this excitement with this ball that's going bloop into the hoop. Because there's so many, there's so many, you know, especially for those who are concerned about odds, probabilities, all those things. There's so many odds stacked up against anything, any of those things happening. And when we see enough of that magic happening over and over and over and over again, um, we've we become used to it until another great, crazy, amazing feat is pulled off. And it, you're like, whoa, that person just did that. They hail married it way from that side of that court. And it, they threw it backwards with their left arm. And uh, did a cartwheel, and there it is. Still went in there. That should be like a five-point shot, maybe an eight-point shot. <laughs> you know, you see that kind of thing. So the vic- so that excitement lies in the, whoa, there's that rare thing. It was almost like the, it's the same feeling I feel that goes with the underdog. When the, when the underdog wins and you go, what? Like I saw that this footage of this runner, this dude in a marathon, and he was way back, way back in the back, way back in the back, and all of a sudden he slowly went around the side, slowly run the, went around the side. Meanwhile, everybody's about to turn that corner. He's went around the outside. Whoa, he's catching him. He's going, whoa, what's that guy doing? What the heck? They're going around the other corner. Whoa, he came around like a, what is he doing? And it's, I mean, it was crazy. We see a lot of that crazy stuff. So what's exciting is seeing someone pull that off magic. Or to, it's seeing them actually make the elephant disappear. We're going, whoa, whoa. It's seeing that, that person who has stuck to their commitment and then they pulled it off. It's such, such a great such a great feeling, such a great vibe. So incredible. That celebration coming together, seeing that embodiment of that spirit. I just learned there are listeners out in Niceville, Florida. People who listen to Inspirato Projecto out there. And these are some of the things that are going on with the uh, community. Every Tuesday is quiet study day in the teen space. Uh, join us for a movie and popcorn last Tuesday of each month at 5.30 p.m. in the youth service program room. Each movie will be rated G or PG. No registration is required. Let's see, what are some of the fun things that happen here? Free shredding event. Uh, Bring all the unwanted personal documents you can carry and have them shredded free of charge June 4th between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. Look for the shredded truck in the softball complex parking lot on Campbell Drive. Did you know it's also voted as one of uh, Florida's safest cities? Niceville is ranked 
number 14 on the list of, by SafeWise, number 14 on their list of 50 safest cities in Florida. There's also a Challenger International Soccer Camp, most popular camp in the USA and Canada. Comes to the Twin Oaks Complex July 8th through the 12th. An innovative curriculum de- develops skills, speed, and confidence in players of all ages and ambitions. Did you know that Niceville is the home of the Boggy Bayou Mullet Festival? Did you know that? Did you know that they are famous for the Turkey Creek Nature Trail? Enjoy the beautiful natural surroundings at one of Niceville's most wondrous attractions, Turkey Creek Nature Trail. That might actually be a really interesting movie called Turkey Creek Nature Trail, and it's all about the interesting things that have happened along that trail through the years. People falling in love, kids riding their skateboards, kids playing hopscotch, uh, people playing frisbee. So here we go. Boggy Fest, Boggy Fest 2019 will take place October 18th, 19th, and 20th at the intersection of Highway 85 North and College Boulevard. That's Boggy Fest. I'm going to learn more about Boggy Fest. I don't know if this is the same thing as Mullet Fest or not. They just gave it a different title. Whoa. Looks like a lot of people show up for, for this. Whoa. Niceville, Florida. Holy cow. Got something called Kidapalooza as a part of it. I'm so curious what that's all about. Feature fun activities for kids of all ages. Face painting, inflatables and bounce house, balloon artists, karaoke contest on the Kidapalooza stage, pony rides, team games, hook toss, hula hoop contest, live entertainment, carnival rides, and petting zoo. Hang out with superhero and princess characters with much more to be announced. Are you kidding me? This is all happening in Niceville. Oh, guess what I found too? Check this out. Check this out. This is on a website called UFO Hunters, where people submit their UFO sightings. Check this out. Niceville, Florida, United States, sighted on Tuesday, 18th, October 2016, reported on Wednesday, 19th, 2016. Shape, sphere, duration, one hour. My dad and I, oh, there's a video here. Before I play this, my dad and I went to the store and he said he saw a bright object out the entire time. When he got home, he wanted to see what planet it was, as it was very bright to discover no planets were supposed to be in that location. Me and my family watched it for about five minutes and I started to record it just as it started blinking. After blinking, it traveled to the left fairly quickly then started going down vertically before stopping again and continuing right until behind a tree and no longer in sight. So here's the link. Let's see. It disappeared. It disappeared. Or no, it's going down, I think. No, it disappeared. It completely... So there you go. Tree from the horse's mouth. Also, um, I'm looking on this website on how to make your own font. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make my own font. So keep your eyes open for that, too. I can't wait. I can't wait to share it. Uh, all right, folks. You know, maybe I'll, I'll share the font with you. Is there a particular phrase or something you'd like to see? Because I'll do it. I'll do it to it. Do it to it. Alright. That's all for now. That's all for now. Thank you so much for keeping your eyes and your ears on on this stuff.